I'm Carol and welcome to Over 50 So What? Age is just a number. We're still going to keep having fun. Are you looking for a change in your life, relationships, work? Well, today we're chatting to Dr. Gary Wolman about a different technique. Transformational body therapy. After the break, we're doing some stretching. Stretching is such an important part of our fitness routine. Keeps us mobile and helps prevent back pain. We're using a chair for support. Lastly, our inspiration component, we chat to Kingston Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Joan Brad, and she's gonna share her tips for how to make the most out of life. Have you been feeling a bit stuck in your life? Like you want to get things moving, but you just don't know how. Maybe you want to follow your passion, change your jobs, attract a partner, or improve your communications with others. Well, today we're going to learn about a new technique to help you do just that. We meet Dr. Gary Wallman. He is the presentation doctor and body transformation therapist. Now with degrees, pre-med and psychology, Gary has also done further studies in the human potential movement. And 50 years ago, he developed the Wolman method for the whole person. This was accredited by the Department of Education and Training. Gary's also got a PhD in transpersonal psychology and expressive arts therapy. He's a speaker, author and trainer, and he's worked with many global corporations. Hi Gary, welcome to Over 50 So What? Great to have you on the show. Great to be here with you, Carol. Now there's a lot of people out there that they're stuck. They want to make a change in their life. They're not happy with certain elements of their life. And you've developed this amazing Wolman method. Can you tell us what is the Wolman method for the whole person? My name is Gary Wolman, so I've done a bit of a twist with the word whole and found the wholeness within and turned it into a methodology called the Wolman method for the whole person, combining stretching the muscles, working with breath and visualization and the sound, and while the muscles are being stretched, I speak in rhyme, like Dr. Seuss. Not to be silly, yet to take people on a very whimsical vision quest to transform their self-talk in the shortest amount of time. Those five sub-modalities of breath, sound, visualization, stretching, and rhyme creates an immediate encodement of the new self-talk in the muscle memory. It's very scientific, it's very simple, it's very fun, and it's really powerful. Most people burst into tears or break free almost instantly of the old patterns, and suddenly they meet the person that they wanted to meet They um, for their business or for their partnership in life. And I do understand that the Department of Education and Training also accredited it. Um, the Department of Education and Training wound up endorsing my methodology. So that, that didn't happen in my own country of the U.S. It happened when I came here and now I do short trainings both online and in person and in human to human, face to face, when people who are already therapists, counselors, doctors, yoga teachers, any specialty at all. If people are able to come and see you personally, what happens in a session of transformational body therapy? You. Very simple. I ask one question. What is it that you're ready to release, receive, and follow through with in your life? There's generally three different answers. So that's what I do. I take people on this short interview, and then I stretch the muscles of the body that are connected to those holding patterns while shifting the self-talk simultaneously. So what sort of challenges have you been helping people with over the last 50 years? Personal relationships, money, um, saying goodbye or attracting the right person or people. Um, all of these are done with metaphors while stretching the muscles at the same time and opening up the creativity. We're freeing first the physical tension, then the emotional self-talk that keeps that tension in place, 
And then the third layer, digging underneath the landscape where people are already buried, then all this creativity comes through. So, so when you ask these three questions, it could be something to do with their personal relationship. It could be something to do with their career. It could be something to do with attracting um, finance and prosperity into their lives. So it, it could be something to do with their health. If you have, you who are listening and watching, because you do, we all do, we all have our version of this. If you have a particular self-talk that's repetitive, let's, let's do one that's, um, let's say, I'm, I'm not enough. That, that's mine. That's one of, that's one of mine. I, of course I'm enough. I'm more than enough. I would ask you who are listening, let's, let's, let's identify this one. I'm not enough, okay? It's not necessarily true. Of course it's not true, but it's a story. So you might do this, okay? First, you're shaking out the hands. Do this with me, Carol. And if you who are listening, you can do this too. Shaking out, and with the sound, I like to enter a little bit of ridiculosity because it has great velocity to it, like a Monty Python moment of letting go of disgust, the sound of vomiting it out, the old pattern. Go ahead. No one wants to feel like they can't have what they want. It's another. Can be silly. It doesn't matter. That's just to move the energy. Step number two in this particular exercise is you direct your right hand, this is my right hand, um, out towards the person that pushed you down years ago, and you address them, saying, I now address you, mother, father, sister, brother, lover, who years ago, when I was very young, had such high, strong expectations that I developed this belief that I'm not enough. So take your right hand. Make it like a cup or a chalice. Say these exact words or your version. I take this pain and I send it. The pain of holding back all these years, the feeling, believing that I'm enough. I send it first with one arm, say it really strong out loud with your full body back to the source. Back to the source. And your full body. Dynamically expressing this, I send it back to where it came. 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 I re have just sent. I have just sent. I have just sent. Pattern. This past pattern. Somewhere else to play. Somewhere else to play. Today for me is a new day. Today for me is a new day. Hooray! Hooray! Persons often, after the first session with me, not all the time, but often in the first session, someone will call me up after and say, what did you do? I just, all these men are calling me, or all these job opportunities are coming to me, or I just got an opportunity to be in a movie, and I can't stop the phone from ringing, because we've shifted the energetics that have created a pushing away. Then the person becomes magnetic. It brings it all together. Breath, sound, visualization, stretching, and rhyme simultaneously creates a new encodement of the self-talk immediately in the muscle memory. You very kindly offered, Gary, um, a free 20 to 30 minute session for any of the viewers that are wa watching. They can pick sort of one process and you'll work through it with them. That's right. I, I can take people through approximately 20 minutes per condition. That, that's how I've developed uh, this specialty over the last it takes about 20 minutes for me to move through one challenge. So bring one challenge to me, and I'm happy to guide you with a complimentary Zoom session, whether it's 20, 30 minutes, I don't care, and you'll, until you get the shift. Now, there'll be a lot of people watching today that have never tried a natural therapy, an alternative therapy, and they think, oh, it's all a bit strange sounding. What would you say to them? I would say, I know what you mean. Because, <laughs> oh my goodness, it's the science and art coming together connecting one's mind, one's emotions, one's physicality. Skeptics quickly dissolve in my midst, even the most critical people, because they, they see their patterns changing, or they see their friends' patterns changing, and they go, oh my God, I think I want what they're having, because they see it work. Yeah, for those of you that don't believe, I recommend, whether it's with me or someone else, I don't care, give it a go. Well, that's great, Gary. That's um, certainly given us lots of food for thought today. And we will put all the links and everything on the website and let people know how they can get hold of you and take advantage of that, that free session. So thanks so much. Great to have you on the show. Oh, all right. Thank you all. And look forward to hearing from you.
Hi everyone, it's time to do some stretching. We don't do stretching very much on the show, but it's something you should be doing just about every day. Great for our overall health and fitness. Up on your feet, if you can, get a chair. Put your feet parallel. Slide one foot back, like you're on train tracks. Push your bottom under, and you'll feel a lovely stretch in the calf muscle. So just hold that stretch there. That's it. All right, you ready to do the other side? So just bring that foot in, slide the other foot right back. Tuck your bottom under, feel the stretch in the other calf and just hold it nice and comfortable. Alright, what we're going to do now is a hamstring stretch. So you get your foot, pull your toe right back, stick your bottom out, lean forward and you should feel the stretch right up the back here, right up the back. And if you want to lean on the chair like this, you can do that. The more you pull your toe back, the more you'll feel it stretching into your calf muscle as well. So. Lovely, lovely stretch. Change legs, so put the other foot forward, pull the toe back, pull it back, stick your bottom out. Just imagine your bottom's been sucked up a vacuum cleaner. Because you want to keep a nice straight back, so rather than have a curve. Pull that toe back, feel that really good stretch. Feel it. Now, our chests get very tight from sitting down so much, so we want to stretch it out. And if you don't stretch it out, you do end up maybe getting a bit of a curve like this as you get older. So just grab the chair, squeeze those shoulder blades together, squeeze the shoulder blades together. The more you squeeze your shoulder blades together, the more you'll feel the stretch across the front. Now I'm going to show you another very, very important stretch. That's again because we sit down so much. This gets tight and pulls on the lower back. So we want to stretch out our hip flexors and our quads. I'm just going to show you the more advanced version first. So if you're flexible, you can just pick one foot up and put your foot to your bottom like that. And you push your bottom forward at the same time. Now, if you're not that flexible, all you need to do is put your foot on the chair. You just put your foot up on the chair. And again, really focus on pushing forward with your bottom so you feel the stretch in the front. If you can feel it here, you know you're doing a good job. If you want a bit of more of a stretch, all you need to do is bend that, that leg. Bend that leg and then keep pushing forward here and you'll feel the stretch right there. You more advanced people, you can stand up and do the one I showed you before. Otherwise, come around the other side of the chair. Put your foot up. Push your bottom forward. Push it forward. Squeeze. Feel it right here. This is a fantastic stretch. Really, if you can, try and do this one every day. It's really going to help your back. Again, if you want more of a stretch, you can just kneel, bend a bit more, push, feel the stretch. That's it. And 
come up. Well done everyone. You've done your stretches for the day. See if you can do this stretch every day as much as you can. Today on Everyday Legend, we meet again our Everyday Legend, Joan Brad. Joan is the Kingston Woman of the Year 2021 Lifetime Award winner. And today we're going to take a peek into this inspirational woman and find out how she makes the most out of life. Hi Joan and welcome back to Over 50 So What? Last time we had a great chat about scouts and how people can get involved in the scouting organisation. You representing the Lifetime Award for the Kingston Woman of the Year and being a fantastic inspiration over the decades for young people. Now today we're going to be talking about something different. We're going to find a bit more out about you and what makes you tick and how you have such an upbeat, energetic approach to life. So to kick off with, this show is called Over 50 So What? And I was wondering, is there any new things that you've taken on since you turned 50? Since I turned 50, yes, I've become a grandma a few times. I would really love to do, and I've started it, is to write a life a book of my own life because not everybody knows what we've done in our past and the things that we've done as a kid and nobody would know that because my kids won't remember unless I write it down so I'm trying to write a book in that sort of thing. So how do you keep yourself going through the tough times? By being positive, doing a lot of crosswords, I'm doing uh, a colouring a family tree at the moment too. Well, I haven't done that for a few weeks, but I've had a huge big tree planted out on a piece of paper and I'm colouring that. And as I'm doing that, I'm listening to music or something. But you've just got to keep positive and keep thinking that there are things to do and there are people worse off than us. And I like to talk to people, call a lot of people and, and try to assist others in anything I can do. I do that a lot in scouting with scouting friends too. So, so one of your key principles, which is what we talk about a lot on the show, is keeping connected and talking to other people and trying to be of service to other people as well. Yes, yeah, exactly. It is so important. And hearing, I know my husband talks a lot on the phone and he does a lot of scouting, but also it's helping and being there listening to other people because a lot of people don't have friends to ring or to talk to. And do you have a bucket list or anything that you want to do in the next... Because you're going to live to 95 probably, maybe older. That's, you know, the stats. So is there anything you want to do before you get to 95? Yes. I'd love to hook up the caravan and drive around Australia. I've, we've really done the East Coast, but I'd love to go up through the centre of Australia and see what all that lovely outback is, all the, the nothing part of the world, and up to the top and then down the West Coast. And I'd love to do around Albany. We've been to Albany and Margaret River and stuff, but I'd really want to stay there for a while. I know I'd be gone for a while, but... You can always FaceTime the kids and the grandkids. But I think that sort of thing, seeing the outback, would be brilliant. I have said that I'd like to go to Antarctica um, and just to see what the life would be like down there, but I don't think that's going to be happening for a while with the COVID and things like that. I think we're going to have to be a bit more careful for a few more years. <laughs> Uh, well, I could actually make a comment there. They are ra running from Melbourne flights to Antarctica uh, in January, February 2022. And basically you just go, you go for the day, you fly up there for a day and back. Oh, really? Put it on your list. <laughs> it's on. There's my pen. It's on. <laughs> 
just that it'd be different to see it. I mean, yes. I don't know how I'd go. I'd love to camp in the snow, to tell you the truth. But I think when I'm 90 or something, I don't know whether I could do that. <laughs> so I'll have to do that pretty soon. Well, there's still some snow around now. so <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've heard recently that there are tents that have got clear roofs on them. And I'd love to do that out in the front yard or something and watch a thunderstorm, you know, watch the lightning and things, but then also watch the stars. Because I remember doing that with my dad, just lying outside at night and watching the stars. Yes, I would be with you on that one. That would be brilliant too, because stars are one of my things as well. <laughs> Here you go, in a tent. To finish off with, uh, what advice would you give to people over 50 on how to make the most out of life? Right. Keep healthy. Eat, eat properly. Don't just sort of sit and shove yucky stuff in your mouth. Talk to other people and keep active if you can. If you can't keep active, keep your brain active and keep talking and listening and trying to have a new skill, whether it be, I don't know whether the, you know, the Scouts is a new skill, but what about getting into, Russell's often talked about getting into rotary and things like that and helping other people and working out how that you how you can get in get in touch with others that need that sort of help. I'm always there to sort of listen and talk to other people. I just love that. Well, that is just beautiful. I'm sure a lot of viewers will take a lot away from that because that's just all golden nuggets right there. So I'm expecting uh, to see some photos of Antarctica and your tent with the clear roof in the next year or so. Thanks so much for coming on the show and inspiring everybody today. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for asking me, Carol. I really appreciate it. We hope you joined in the stretching routine today. If you'd like more five minute fitness videos, just head over to YouTube over 50 So What. And if you'd like to find out more about Dr. Gary Wallman, head to the website carolohalloran.com. Any guests you see on the show, you'll find their details on the website and also with every replay on Facebook and YouTube. We'd love for you to join our Facebook community, Over 50 So What? And now Everyday Legend Today, Joan said, keep active, keep talking and listening to others and keep trying new things to keep your brain active. I'm Carol, Over 50, so what? Thanks for watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, Get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what?